my brothers and sisters. We are about to begin this act of worship, service of thanksgiving. I invite you to please stand as we commence. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me, shall never die. The hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live unto the Lord. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. O Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And the first and the last. And he who lives and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. First things are passed away. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, head of the church and savior of the whole world. I welcome you to the James Street Methodist Church and to this service of thanksgiving as we honor the life that God gave to Frank Eric Blackman. Even now we know the presence of God who stands with us in our grief and assures us that he will never leave nor forsake us. Let us therefore lift our hearts and our voices as we give thanks to God and celebrate Frank's life. The hymn, How Great Thou art, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made.
overcome. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you now in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement. Praying, O Lord, our God, that we may find strength in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of our loved one, one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord, our God, that death is not the end of those who believe and trust in you for their full salvation. And may our hearts be so composed by the power of the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Oh God, we pray that you will lift us above our present distress and sorrow and that you'd shine the light of your grace and glory upon Frank's wife and children and other loved ones and friends and all those who mourn his death. Even now, oh God, we pray that you will draw near to us and help us in this time as we celebrate his life and reflect on our own journey. May sufficient grace be given to us that in all that we do, your name will be lifted up and praised. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we are met in this solemn moment to commend Frank Eric Blackman into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and in whose name alone we have salvation. And so even as we recall to mind the life work and witness of our brother Frank, we hear from Holy Scripture words of life. We hear from Scripture words of hope. We hear from Scripture 
God's word for us today. And so before we have the reading of the psalm, we sing to the glory of God. And yes, today as we celebrate Frank's life, we will do so in song. Many hymns to celebrate and give thanks to God for this life that God has given to us. The hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Let us worship God in song. Brother Michael Gaskin will now share with us a reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm 46. Morning, church. Sam says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the seas, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams, whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melt. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he hath made in the earth. 
He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord is the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Here endeth the reading. And we again lift our voices and sing, trust and obey, for, for there is no other way, absolutely no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Would you stand and sing with me to the glory of God?
Amen. Please remain standing for the gospel. The gospel according to John 14, 1 to 6 and 27. Sister Frida Nichols Ole will read for us. The lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Here ends the lesson. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, let me first of all take this opportunity to express condolences to Sister Margaret and the family friends and well-wishers of Frank on behalf of the people called Methodists, in particular the members and officers of the James Street Methodist Church, we want to assure you that we have been praying with you and for you when we learned of Frank's death, and we will continue to surround you with our prayers and our support as long as you need it. Because grief is a process, and we want you to know that we will be with you during that process of adjusting to a life without Frank's physical presence, knowing that you will always carry with you the memories that you have of him. But most of all, to assure you that the God who was, is, and will always be is the same God who walks with you and talks with you and tells you again and again that all will be well. I pray that you would learn how to lean upon him and to gain strength from God when you are weak. May God truly bless you and keep you and be assured of our continued prayerful support. I also, on my own personal behalf, that of my family and myself, to assure you that we will continue to hold you in our prayers and will continue to support you during this time of grief and loss. May God truly bless all of you and keep you. Let us pray. O oh God, O oh God, we bless you and give you thanks for the word that was read from Holy Scripture, for the words that you have spoken into our lives and over our lives 
throughout our entire journey on this earth. We recognize that part of the journey of life takes us through the valley of the shadow of death. But we bless you and give you thanks today that the valley is not an end, that the valley of the shadow of death is not an end, it is not a destination, but it is a pathway that leads us to the very throne of God. And so, Lord God, we pray and give you thanks that even as our brother Frank has passed through the valley of the shadow of death, that he does not remain and he's not in the valley because you have taken him unto yourself. Help us, therefore, to celebrate his life with that hope that one day we will meet again in glory. Uphold me now that the word that I will share will be a word that will inspire us to persevere to the very end. So let the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. My brothers and sisters, as I reflect from time to time on our journey through this life, it occurs to me that there is that desire in all of us for significance. I believe that everyone has a desire to do something meaningful with their life, to make a difference, to have a sense of worth, a sense of value, to be someone significant. I believe that the moment we are born and we make our first cry, that we are on our way searching for significance. And that quest, that search for significance does not end until we breathe our last breath and enters into glory. It is also my belief that God has placed that desire in each one of our hearts. The good news is that God has created each one of us for a specific purpose, and that is to bring glory and honor to God in whatever we do, in whatever sphere of life we find ourselves, that we bring honor and glory to God. And therefore, true joy and true fulfillment is found in discovering that purpose, then pursuing it passionately with all that we have, with all that we are, that we give all of ourselves in pursuing that passion. You may have never heard of individuals again and again in scripture, Moses and Elijah, and Abraham, and Darkus, and Peter. But when you read the stories of their lives, it's always a story of persons who are searching for significance. And so for me, as I reflect on that, for me, what is important is not only how an individual starts and how an individual ends. What is so significant is the story of that person's life. Because the story tells us something about their search for significance. And there are three things that I want to reflect with us briefly on concerning that story, that search, that quest for significance as we reflect and give thanks to God for the life of our brother Frank Blackman. 
The first thing that we need to know when it comes to the search for significance is to look again at the people who journey with us, the, the people who are a part of our story. And most significant in this regard is to ensure at all times that our main companion on the journey of life, our main companion in our search for significance is God. I submit to us that if God is not our main companion in our search for significance, if God is not our main companion on the journey of life, if God is not our main companion as we search for significance, that we will search and search and search, and we will never find significance. We will never experience real joy. We will never experience real fulfillment because I hear Jesus saying in the gospel according to St. John read to us a moment ago, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In other words, Jesus is saying, I am the way to significance. I am the way to real joy and fulfillment. I am the one who leads you to the place where you experience great sense of fulfillment and significance and so it is saying to me that Jesus must be our main companion on this journey called life that Jesus must be a part of our story we sang a while ago this is my story what really is your story and Jesus must be a significant part of that story if we are going to find significance. I submit to us that it doesn't matter what else we achieve in this life. It doesn't matter how popular we become in this life unless we have Jesus as our main companion. Then we are going to find that life is going to um, present to us a number of details uh, and we will never know exactly where and there are some persons who are always making wrong turns in their life uh, and can never seem to find their way because they fail to recognize that Jesus himself is the way so our search for significance must always ensure that Jesus is our main companion. But you see, my brothers and sisters, there are some other persons who accompany us on that journey who are also important. And so we bless God that even as our brother Frank was on the search for significance and God being his main companion, he had some other persons like his wife Margaret and his children and other persons who came into his life for specific purposes and specific seasons and how they were able to contribute to him finding significance. You see, the point that I'm making is that if you have the wrong people as part of your journey, they are going to create all kinds of details. Sometimes unknowingly, but sometimes deliberately in order for you not to find your purpose, your way. And so finding the right companions in addition to God, and it is God who gives us the discernment so that we know who to, and to, to allow into our lives, who we should allow into our story as our story is being shaped. I think of so many persons who could have achieved greatness but unfortunately they brought the wrong people into their lives I've watched so many young people for example who started out so well so bright so brilliant in school doing so well but got in the wrong crowds and what should have been a significant life of contributing to the development of humanity, they then become 
someone who keeps taking and unable to contribute, to give, of what so many persons who have started out right, who are on the right path, who are on the right way, but they allow the wrong people into their lives, allow the wrong people into their conversation, allow the wrong people into their personal space, allow the wrong people as their advisors, and then their lives begin to drift away from significance and purpose. But in addition to the people who accompany us and God, our main companion, we meet other people along the way and how we treat with them and how we interact with them is always going to be important. As a matter of fact, as I spoke with a couple of persons who knew Frank well, much better than I knew him, and there was one word that was consistent in all the persons that I spoke with. And that one word was the word integrity. Each of them said to me, Frank was a man of integrity. In every area that he was involved, he was a man of integrity. He wanted the best for people. He wanted to see people achieve. He wanted to see people become the best that they could become. He was a man of integrity. There was no sense of immorality in his life. He, what he said, he meant what he said, and he exemplified what he professed. And my brothers and sisters, there are some persons who, you know, when, when you look at their public life and you look at their personal lives, you can't identify them because what you see in public is a totally different story than what you see in private. And this is what it means to be a person of integrity when you have one life. One life, wherever you go, it's the same life. Whether you are in the limelight or you're in the cupboard, it is one life that brings glory to God. Therefore, God, as we search for integrity, as we, as, as we search, sorry, for significance, It is important for us to recognize that God has called us to do the right thing simply because it is right. We do not do the right thing to be awarded. We do not do the right thing to get the applause of men. We do not do the right thing so, so that there will be some kind of kickback. We do the right thing simply because it is right. And one of the things that I keep impressing on my children again and again, one is nine years old and the other is five, and I always say to them, do the right thing, not so that I will reward you, but just do it because it is right. And people of integrity, people who are on the search for significance and genuinely want to find significance are people who do the right thing simply because it is right. I'm told that Frank was such a man. But also, my brothers and sisters, when we search in our search for significance, our work must also speak to that story, the work we engage in. In other words, what I'm saying is that whatever we do, we must do it to the very best of our ability. Whatever we do, we must put our whole heart into it. Whatever we do, we must put our whole self into it. Whatever we do, we must not hold back, but we must give our all. And there are some persons, before they get involved, they ask, what's in it for me? And if there's nothing in it for me, then they begin to be stingy with their time, and they begin to be stingy with their gifts and graces. They begin to be stingy with their resources. But whatever we do, we must do it to the best of our ability. Oh, what a people we would be if every employee is to give their best. 
Oh, what a people that we would be if every leader, whether it be national or community leader, would give their best. Oh, what a people we would be if the people of God, the people of the church, were to give their best. Oh, what a people we would be if all people in this country and in this world were to give their best. Jesus gave his best. God gave his best because I hear in John 3, 16, the word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave all that he had, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Eternal life. God gave God's best. And therefore, God is calling us in our search for significance to give our best. I read the newspaper articles, and so many people can't conspire to tell such a big lie concerning Frank. Consistently, you heard how oh, he gave his best. No holding back. What about us? Are we giving our best to our society? Are we giving our best to our families? Are we giving our best to our children? Are we giving our best to humanity? Let me say finally, that a person who is in search of significance always consider their legacy. There are some persons who have come into this world and they have made no difference to it and they have left. They have gotten much from it, but they have given very little to it. And as quickly as they die, you forget them. It's as though they never lived. There are some persons, however, who have died physically but are very much alive. Because every minute we have to refer to them. We keep going back to something that they would have done, something that they would have said, something that they would have gotten involved in that has been so significant that it has left an indelible mark on us and it has made an indelible mark on our society and the lives of individuals. Try as you may, you would never forget Martin Luther King. Try as you may, you would never forget Nelson Mandela. Try as you may, as people call Methodists, you would never forget Sarah Ann Gill or John Wesley or Reverend Shrewsbury. Because uh, we keep going back to their experience, going back to what they said, going back to what they did, going back to their own experience, their story. Because their story, even though they have died, their story is still alive. That is what I call legacy. And there's no doubt that Frank has left a godly legacy. And everything that he has been involved with, try as you may, you're going to hear the name of Frank Eric Blackman being called. When people come up short, somebody's going to remind them of what Frank said, of what Frank did, of how Frank gave. That's what God is calling us to as we search for significance. Not just to come and go and not make a mark. And not a mark so that we can boast about it, but a mark so that the things that we stood for, that the next generation will pick up the battle and will fight to the end. I believe that is what Jesus said when he said to the disciples, even though you die, yet shall you live. Even though you are physically dead, you will continue to live in the community of faith, in the lives of your children, in the lives of those who are closest to you, those who knew you best. My brother, my sister, 
are you on this quest for significance? Then the Word of God makes it clear that we have to begin with God as our main companion. We sang a while ago, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. May God give grace to all of us. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our oh God, how great are you, Lord God, in all the earth. How wonderful you are, and how dearly you love us, your children. We pray, O oh God, today that your word will not fall on hard, patched ground, but that your word will find soil that is conducive for nurture, growth, life-giving and growth. So may your word find some place in our hearts to grow, even if we find ourselves in a difficult place, that something will still grow where we are at. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters, stand with me as you're able as we affirm, reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 8 of your order of service. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for prayers. Our prayers of thanksgiving. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, O Lord, and O God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God, our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Frank, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessings that his life brought to others, for his service to his generation, according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of his life. God, we bless you for your mercy and goodness, which followed him all the days of his life, that now the trials of this world are over, and death itself is past. 
receive him into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn, And Can It Be, that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Died he for me, who caused his pain for me, who him to death pursue. Amazing love. How could it ever be that you, our God, should die for us? The Methodist anthem, him that has blessed generations of those who have worshipped God in this sacred space and across the world. Let us sing to the glory of God.
Please remain standing for the commendation. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your son for our redemption, we commend our brother Frank Eric to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto him, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen and amen. We sing our closing hymn. The King of Love, my shepherd is number 76 in our Methodist hymnal Voices in Praise, also printed in our order of worship.
Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do as well, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. I invite you to remain standing as the body leaves the church. his children. So the Lord pities the those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As a man his days are like grass. As the flow of the field for him flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children. For the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him. And his righteousness. Children's children. 